The rap world can be a dangerous business. It's not like you're in the clear just because you've made it big and left your rough neighborhood behind. Sadly, quite a few well-known artists, including Nipsey Hussle, Takeoff, XXX, Tentacion, and Pop Smoke, have met tragic ends in what started as everyday situations. But today, let's talk about 15 rappers who weren't caught lacking and ready for ops. They were either caught packing heat or straight up admitted they were packing. Lil Baby. Dominique Jones, also known as Lil Baby, was born in 1994 in Atlanta. Life wasn't all sunshine and rainbows for him, though. At just two years old, his dad left, and he had to grow up real fast in the tough streets of Atlanta. Like many of his peers, Lil Baby and his single mom struggled through poverty, facing eviction notices that left deep scars that have stayed with him. Growing up, he got caught up in stealing and gambling, but amidst the hardships, he found solace in rap music, which would later become a major inspiration for his journey. Lil Baby has had his share of run-ins with the law, serving a two-year jail sentence at one point. After his release, he kicked off his rap career with the Quality Control label, the same label that nurtured talents like Migos and Lil Yachty. While Lil Baby may not be the poster child for gang violence in the rap scene, he did admit in an interview after the tragic death of Pop Smoke that he might need to be more cautious. Pop Smoke situation did make me feel like I need to just tighten up a lot more. And if you need more convincing, just check out the photos of him posing with fans, where it seems like he's packing heat, especially in that snapshot with James Harden and Bun B in Houston. At first glance, photos one and two posted by Joe Dan Thrilla look normal, but when you look closely, you can see the imprint of Lil Baby's hand holding a gun in his hoodie very tightly. Some folks speculate that Lil Baby is feeling uneasy, especially with the recent shootings in Texas, but truth be told, he's been keeping a tight grip on guns for a while now. About eight months ago, a video leaked showing Lil Baby driving while clutching a firearm when a fan rolled up to pay respect. While some argue that the gun might be a prop, it's hard to say. Your safety becomes a top priority when you're as famous as Lil Baby. A fan showing love could potentially be someone with less friendly intention. We've seen this scenario play out all too often in the world of celebrities. One thing's clear, Lil Baby doesn't plan on getting caught off guard. YG. Keenan Dequan Ray Jackson, or YG, as he's known in the rap game, grew up in Compton, on the west side of LA. LA itself is no stranger to gang life, and YG got involved in some of that stuff pretty early on. He started hanging out with friends who were into it, and by the time he hit 16, he had officially joined the Bloods. That meant he was doing things like jumping people, and generally having a good time at the expense of others. YG's dad had his own troubles and ended up in prison for tax fraud when YG was just a kid, so YG had to figure out how to make ends meet. He ended up selling drugs and even trying his hand at breaking into houses, but that didn't go so well, and he got caught when he was 19. To make matters worse, he had dogs chasing after him before he got busted, and he ended up serving six months for causing property damage. It's safe to say that YG's relationship with the police has been far from friendly. In 2012, they shut down the filming of one of his music videos because gunshots were fired. Then on July 3rd, 2019, there was a shootout involving a deputy in Compton, which sadly resulted in a man's death. The twist? The suspect was in an SUV registered under YG's name. But the real turning point in YG's life happened in 2015. He got shot three times while at a recording studio in Los Angeles. West Coast rapper YG is expected to survive after being shot three times. His manager says the wounds are not life-threatening. Rolling Stone magazine reports that a friend drove YG to the hospital after a shooting and there are no suspects in custody. Thankfully, a friend rushed him to the hospital. But when the police tried to get information from him, YG didn't say much and claimed not to know who the shooters were. After that incident, YG admitted he became pretty paranoid about getting shot again and not knowing who might come after him. It's tough when you can't trust the people around you in the rap industry, where friends can become enemies and snitches can end up in dangerous situations. So YG has tightened up his security, always wary of the next potential threat, whether it's from the police or anyone else looking for trouble. K Flock. Kevin Perez, better known as K-Flop, is a 20-year-old rapper who burst onto the rap scene in 2020 with his hit single, Shaking. He quickly gained fame with millions of streams on Spotify and YouTube, making a name for himself in the industry. But fame didn't shield him from some real life and virtual clashes with his rival. Before the tragic passing of Ra Jeezy in July 2021, he and K-Flop were known for their heated online beef, often played out on Instagram Live. They exchanged some heated words. Are you but K Flock wasn't satisfied with just virtual spats. He decided to up the ante by visiting Raw's neighborhood and streaming it on Instagram Live. Hey, so it's about to get lit. 
grabbed their basketball and started leaving. <laughs> in the clip, he also made some disrespectful remarks about the locals. After leaving the scene, Raw G's responded on Instagram Live, calling for K Flock to return to the neighborhood because he and his crew were there in real time. Somebody attack K Flock, nigga. Nah, play him, come right back. Niggas outside right now as we speak. You coming through hot and all live, blocking the your lives from the can't see your shit. Like, what's up? Following this incident, a video surfaced of people loyal to K Flock chasing after Raw Jeezy on the streets. This prompted K Flock to diss Raw Jeezy in his song Power with lyrics like, Raw, Raw, he saw me, he ain't let it clap. Like, Ask him how much I threw back. However, Raw G's didn't stay silent. He responded in his song, Real Facts, with lines like, Ayo KK, now let's talk about the facts. Anytime that they threw, I threw back. It was clear that Raw G's was ready to match K Flock's energy no matter what. Sadly, this somewhat playful rivalry came to a sudden and tragic end on July 11, 2021, when Raw G's was shot and killed while in an Uber by two gunmen on a scooter. Around 11.30 Sunday night by the corner of East 178th Street and Webster Avenue in the Bronx. Police say two men pulled scooters up next to a cab Medrano was taking to a recording studio. They then shot him in his head and chest, killing him. The police believed his death might be related to the murder of a 13-year-old in the Bronx earlier that day. Despite police evidence suggesting gang involvement, Raji's family denied any such connection. His sister emphasized that he was not involved in gangs and was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. K Flock didn't just clash virtually. There was an incident where he confronted a member of the YGZ gang in their neighborhood as captured in an Instagram live video. Hey, it was gunner. It was gunner. Oh, why? What? Oh, why? I slapped the out you. Tell him why. Tell him 800 said suck my you heard? The rap game can be intense, with rivalries sometimes spilling into the real world, and K Flock certainly had his share of drama on and off social media. 21 Savage. Like many other rappers on the scene, 21 Savage understands the need to stay on guard, especially in Atlanta. Now, despite being known as an Atlanta rapper, 21 Savage, whose real name is Shaya bin Abraham Joseph, was actually born in the UK, but moved to Atlanta with his mom. Life hasn't been easy for him since then. He's faced homelessness, brushes with the law, and even multiple gunshot wounds. Back in the seventh grade, 21 Savage got himself permanently banned from every school in the DeKalb County School District. The reason? Gun possession. He brought a gun to school to confront his bullies. This led to a journey through various schools in the Atlanta area before, landing in a juvenile detention center. After his release, he managed to complete the 8th grade through an alternative program but eventually dropped out of high school during his freshman year due to numerous suspensions that left him feeling drained. That's when he decided to drop out and get into the crack selling business, eventually joining the Bloods gang. In an interview with Noisy, 21 Savage shared his rough upbringing and how it shaped him. His first gunshot wound came at just 12 years old when he was caught in a drive-by shooting while walking home from a friend's house. Surgery was needed to remove the bullet from his jaw. A few years later, he was shot again, this time in the head and neck. Miraculously, he survived, but it left a lasting mark. After being shot twice, he started carrying a gun everywhere he went. Being around a crowd involved in crime and conflict took a toll on 21 Savage. He witnessed friends and even his brother Taman lose their lives. He himself was shot six times and came close to death. He claims to have disarmed the shooter and turned the gun on him. After you got shot that many times, like what, what really changed? I turned into a savage, man. I got on that bullshit. I got now I'm trying to kill everybody, man. Everybody. After recovering, 21 Savage turned his focus to his rap career, going from a local artist to achieving Billboard hits and Grammy nominations. But he never forgot the importance of staying vigilant and never getting caught lacking. At a pool party in 2018, a fight erupted, and in the blink of an eye, 21 Savage strapped up. When people you consider family leave you bleeding on the floor, you learn to stay ready for any threats that may come your way. Just like that, the baby. Jonathan Lindell Kirk, better known as DaBaby, hails from South Carolina, and he's made it quite clear that he's not one to be caught off guard. He's had his fair share of encounters where his trusty firearm might have saved his life. Take 2018, for example, when DaBaby was out shopping for winter coats with his kids and baby mama at Walmart. Things took a dangerous turn when a man named Jalen Craig confronted him, pulling out a strap. Fortunately, DaBaby was armed as well and acted in self-defense, firing back and ultimately shooting Craig in the store. Who would have thought such a thing would happen in a Walmart, right? According to DaBaby, both individuals had been giving him unsettling looks and appeared as if they were about to pull their guns on him, so he defended himself, and sadly, Craig didn't survive his injuries on. DaBaby didn't face manslaughter charges thanks to a successful plea of self-defense, but he did get charged for carrying a concealed firearm. It wasn't the first time he got into trouble for carrying a firearm that he shouldn't have. His first brush with the law happened back in 2013 when he was charged with possession of marijuana and carrying a weapon. Then 
again, in 2018, he got arrested for having a firearm that wasn't registered in his name in North Carolina. Another instance where DaBaby's gun came to his rescue was when his home was invaded by six armed individuals. Charlotte rapper DaBaby was home last night during a shooting on his property. Officers say they responded to the home last night and found one person shot. The victim is expected to be okay. He recounted the incident in an interview with Vlad TV, sharing that it happened a year after he entered the rap game. According to him, he was awakened by the commotion of these rookies attempting to rob him, making quite a ruckus. The baby acted swiftly, taking on the armed intruders like a real-life action hero. He managed to take out the guy closest to him and then made his escape through the back door. He wasn't about to take on six home invaders. Even John Wick knew when it was time to make a run for it. The baby has made it very clear to anyone thinking of cross him that he's always prepared for any op. When rival rapper Cam Coldheart decided to go after DayBaby on Instagram, stirring up trouble, the baby was ready to face the challenge head on. Long story short, the feud ended with DayBaby posting a video on his Instagram showing Cam Coldheart passed out in front of a Louis Vuitton store with his pants down. Gucci Mane. Gucci Mane, whose real name is Radrick Delantic Davis, is a renowned hip-hop artist born in Bessemer, Alabama, okay. but raised primarily in Atlanta, Georgia. He's not just a rapper, he's a legend in the game, and is often credited as one of the pioneers of trap music. His influence is immense, especially among the younger generation of artists. Before Gucci Mane decided to turn his life around, focusing on his health and building his record label, he had quite a reputation as a wild character in the rap world. Gucci was always known for his authenticity as a street artist, but one incident from his early career solidified his reputation as a true savage. This incident was linked to an ongoing feud he had with rapper Young Jeezy. Both were rising stars in Atlanta's rap scene during the early 2000s, initially collaborating on a track called Icy in 2005. However, Jeezy left the track off his debut album and Gucci released it on his own album, Trap House. This move infuriated Jeezy, who claimed he never received payment or royalties for his feature. Tensions reached a boiling point and Jeezy responded with a diss track called Stay Strap, where he offered a $10,000 bounty for Gucci's chain. Gucci retaliated by calling Jeezy a frog, and their beef escalated into a full-blown feud. In 2005, Gucci Mane was arrested and charged with murder following a shooting that resulted in the death of rapper Pookie Lock. The incident occurred when Gucci and his companions were attacked by a group of men at a house in Decatur, Georgia. In self-defense, Gucci and his crew fired back at the attackers, leading to the death of Pookie Lock. The rapper turned himself into police investigators on May 19, 2005, and was initially charged with murder. However, the charge was later dropped due to insufficient evidence. On March 22, 2013, the Atlanta Police Department issued a warrant for Gucci Mane's arrest after he was accused of assaulting a fan who approached him for a photo. The fan claimed that Gucci hit him with a bottle on the head while discussing a photo with a security guard. Gucci Man is in the Fulton County Jail this afternoon after a judge denied bond for him today. Two charges of felony aggravated assault stemming from a March 16th incident at Harlem Nights in downtown Atlanta. A a soldier from Kentucky celebrating his birthday claims he asked Davis for a picture in the VIP area when he says the rapper smashed a champagne bottle over his head. Another incident followed shortly after, in which Gucci was accused of punching a man who tried to shake his hand after a concert at Club Onyx in Philadelphia. Gucci Mane turned himself in on aggravated assault charges and was denied bond. He later posted bail, but was arrested again for a parole violation. Gucci Mane's life and career have had their share of ups and downs, and he's known for his past as much as his music. Snap Dog. Snap Dog, born on December 7, 1993 in Detroit, Michigan, had a tough upbringing. His dad was a big-time drug dealer, but that changed, and life got harder for his family. He tragically lost his twin brother to street violence, which made him rethink his path. He decided to leave the street life behind and pursue a legit career. Snap Dog chose to chase his deceased twin's dream of becoming a boxer. When Snap Dog was just 17, he got into some serious legal trouble because of his street affiliation. He was looking at a possible 25 years in prison if found guilty. Luckily, he beat the charges and found his way into the rap game. One of his early moments in the spotlight was when he dropped the I'm Trippin' video on world star hip-hop. Surprisingly, it didn't get famous for its lyric, but because there was a part where the Detroit police tried to mess up the shoot, Snap Dogg didn't let them bother him, he just kept on filming. Now, Snap Dogg seemed like he was on his way to a successful career, but he also had his fair share of conflicts. In 2018, Takashi 69 started calling out Chicago rappers like Chief Keef, Lil Reese, and G Herbo. But soon after, he was seen having a chat with Lil Durk on Instagram Live. When I said that, I, listen, I don't take none of that back because I feel when I, if I do that but when I said that, I addressed it to that particular. Like, yo, blood, do something about it. I, 
What now? Like, you know what I'm saying? Lil Durk seemed cool in the video, but Snap Dogg wasn't happy about it. He thought Lil Durk should have stayed out of a beef that had nothing to do with him. So, they had a feud going on, with Snap Dogg challenging Lil Durk to a fight in another Instagram Live video, saying they could settle things in the ring. We could get in the ring, me and Durk, nobody, no cameras, no nothing, so he could feel comfortable getting this whooping. Period. Apart from his beef with Lil Durk, Snap Dogg also had some issues with Rico Reckless in 2017. They were throwing insults at each other on social media, and Snap Dogg even challenged Rico Reckless to a boxing match. The surprising part is that Rico Reckless actually traveled to Detroit to confront Snap Dogg and accept the boxing challenge. But in the end, the match never happened, and they patched things up before the year was over. In 2017, there was this Instagram live session with Snap Dogg and his crew out on the streets. They were shouting all sorts of stuff, challenging people, and calling causing a ruckus. Then, out of nowhere, Snap Dogg pulled out a gun and fired a few shots, all while streaming it live on Instagram. He realized he messed up big time and ended the live stream, but the damage was already done. Lil Durk. Dirk Derek Banks, also known as Lil Dirk, had a tough upbringing, much like many young men in his neighborhood. His childhood was marked by challenges, with his father serving a life sentence since Dirk was just two years old. As a result, he felt the weight of responsibility from a very young age, being the man of the house for his mother, two sisters, and grandmother. Life was far from easy, and they often struggled to make ends meet. At 17, Lil Dirk became a father and decided to drop out of high school to take care of his child. He also became associated with the Black Disciples, a decision that led to him spending a significant portion of his teenage years in prison. As time went on, Lil Durk became more deeply involved in the music industry. In 2010, he founded the Only The Family Rap Collective, but he didn't leave behind his ties to gang life. Many of the members in his rap group were also part of the Black Disciples, including his childhood friend King Von. Even as Lil Durk's music career took off, he didn't abandon his street smart way. He and his crew remained well prepared for ops. These days, he doesn't go anywhere without a team armed with legal firearms. So which one of these dudes in this room right now got the gun is what I'm asking. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, ain't nothing no right there. Got no felony, so, you know. Ready to intervene should things go south suddenly. Lil Durk's life has not been without its dangers, as he's faced threats from both the law and rival factions. His first significant brush with the law occurred in 2011, when he was arrested for firearm possession, with bail set at $100,000. In 2015, his tour bus was targeted in a shooting outside a concert in Philadelphia. Then, in 2019, both Lil Durk and King Von were arrested in connection with a shooting in Atlanta. The 2019 arrest could potentially be the most serious, given Lil Durk's criminal record. He faces charges of carrying a weapon, attempted murder, and involvement in gang activities. According to prosecutors, he and another individual robbed and shot a man outside a famous Atlanta drive-in on February 5th, 2019, over a Jeep Cherokee and $30,000. Lil Durk maintains his innocence, stating that he only used his firearm after shots were already fired. His primary goal is to avoid going to prison. Despite the challenges he's faced, one thing remains clear. Lil Durk is always prepared for any ops. Lil Mexico South Carolina has given rise to a rising rap star in the form of Lil Mexico, whose real name is LaFazio Jones. Being of Mexican descent, Lil Mexico has connections with both black friends and his own family. Lil Mexico's journey into the rap game began at a young age, around 11 years old, inspired by the legendary Lil Wayne's music and charisma. Hailing from Gray's Court, this 22-year-old artist draws inspiration from his small-town roots and the split life between his parents to craft authentic rap lyrics that speak to real-life experiences. Alongside his money-making Outlaws crew, Lil Mexico kicked off his career with hits like Forever, Fully Loaded, and Trap Boy. He's also made a name for himself by signing with Alamo Records and affiliating with Lil Durk's OTF camp. At a certain point in his career, Lil Mexico decided to open up through his music, offering listeners a glimpse into the life of a Mexican gangster. Despite his cool exterior, Lil Mexico takes the safety of his turf seriously. This protege of Lil Durk had a spine-chilling experience in the comfort of his own home. Surveillance footage captured the tense moment when a masked intruder attempted to force his way in. The incident left no room for doubt about the dangers that even established rappers face, even within their own domain. Lil Mexico's vigilance spared him from a potential catastrophe, emphasizing the ever-present need for caution and security in an industry fraught with peril. Speaking about the incident, Lil Mexico later tweeted, I don't trust a soul, but I know one thing for sure, I ain't going. Pooh Shiesty.
Pooh Shiesty, also known as Lontrell Williams, has made quite a name for himself, not just for his music, but also for his brushes with the law and his involvement in a fierce feud with rival gang members, including EBG E. Jizzle. Shiesty's journey began alongside his pals in the Chopper Gang crew. After spending a couple of years away from Memphis, living with his mom in Texas, he made his way back to the Mid-South, where he decided to put his focus on his music career. Part of the Chopper Gang collective, which featured talents like Big 30, Chopper T, and K. Shiesty, he started making waves with tracks like Breaking News, released in 2018. In the spring of 2020, fate threw a curveball his way in the form of Gucci Mane, a Grammy-nominated platinum-certified rapper. Gucci reached out to Shiesty on Instagram, and before long, he offered him a record deal, inviting him to be part of his exciting venture, the new 1017 label with Atlantic Records. However, it hasn't been all smooth sailing for Pooh Shiesty. In October 2020, he found himself facing some serious charges related to a shooting in the Bay Harbor Island. This incident left two people hospitalized, and Shiesty was accused of armed robbery, aggravated assault, and more. Surveillance cameras showing a new view of a violent shootout in a parking lot of a South Florida apartment building. The barrage of bullets sending two people to the hospital, and it lands a rapper in jail. The unfortunate event unfolded during a meeting where one person planned to sell Shiesty some shoes, and another intended to sell him marijuana and finalize a car rental. As tensions escalated, two armed individuals entered the scene, leading to gunfire and injuries to the victim. To add to the complications, a Louis Vuitton bag containing a whopping $40,912 in cash fell out of a McLaren during the incident. Notably, Shisti had posted pictures on Instagram just days before the robbery, flaunting guns and stacks of dollar bills. Police didn't have to look far for evidence linking Shisti to the scene. His own Instagram account proved incriminating, and the troubles didn't end there. On June 9, 2021, Williams was arrested again, this time in connection to a shooting at a strip club in Northwest Miami-Dade. He was accused of shooting a security guard in the leg at the King of Diamonds Club on May 30th, shortly after his performance there. Interestingly, the security guard later changed his statement, claiming he didn't actually see who shot him. In the end, Shiesty faced the consequences of his actions and was sentenced to five years and three months behind bars. He also faced federal charges, including discharging a firearm during a violent crime, conspiracy, and robbery for the Bay Harbor Islands incident. King Von. Davin Daquan Bennett, who is also known as King Von, was a prominent and feared figure in the Black Disciples gang in Chicago and gained notoriety as a smooth-talking drill rapper mentored by his friend Lil Durk. Born on August 9, 1994, to Walter Bennett, a high-ranking gang member, King Von grew up in one of Chicago's most perilous neighborhoods, famously known as O Block. He shared his upbringing with four half-siblings. From a very young age, King Von was immersed deep in a world of violence, firearms, and drugs. Tragedy struck when he lost his father at the age of 11, and by the time he turned 13, he had already become a member of the Black Disciples, a remarkably early entry into gang life. It's rumored that King Von was involved in the deaths of at least seven individuals. Given his deep-rooted association with gang violence and years spent in such a notorious group, it's no surprise that King Von frequently found himself on the wrong side of the law. His first major legal trouble was a shooting incident outside a house party in Chicago involving members of a rival gang known as the Gangster Disciples. Despite multiple fatalities, King Von served only four years in prison, managing to avoid a murder conviction. However, he didn't retire his firearm after that incident. On multiple occasions, he faced arrest for unlawful possession of firearm and engagement in gang-related activities. Remarkably, none of these charges stuck, allowing him to remain a free man. In 2019, King Von and his childhood friend, Lil Durk, were apprehended in connection with a shooting in Atlanta. It appeared that this case might finally land King Von in prison for good, but the authorities never got the satisfaction of seeing it through. Tragically, on November 6th, 2020, at the age of 26, King Von's life was cut short when he was shot and killed outside a nightclub in Atlanta during a heated altercation with Quando, Rondo, Shah Ek. Alongside K Flock, Shah EK, short for Shah Everything Killer, who's made a name for himself in the rap scene, faced his ops head on. Hailing from the Bronx, he gained recognition with his track DD &D released in 2020, which has now garnered over 13.4 million streams on Spotify. Like many rappers, Shah EK had a tumultuous upbringing. Growing up in the Melrose area of the South Bronx, he got his first gunshot wound at the age of 15. Although it wasn't fatal, this incident drew him into the world of rap and deep into street related activities 
that would lead to confrontations with his rivals in the years to come. One notable incident involved Shaw E.K. encountering an individual who had dissed his gang while walking home from school. In a video that circulated online, Shaw E.K. confronted this rival and asked if he was part of those who had been insulting them. The individual, clearly caught off guard and without any backup, responded with incoherent words and tried to move away. But in no time, Shaw E.K. and his crew began chasing him, shouting grab him as they closed in. During the filming of the Killing for Success documentary led by Vice, a brawl broke out as Shaw Eck and his crew chased another rival outside a courthouse. Fortunately, the area was swarming with police officers, and they stepped in before things escalated further. Shaw Eck and all of his crew just ran after this boy, and the next thing you know, police come out from nowhere. After the police intervention, Shaw Eck had some strong words to express his feelings, as seen in another video. And I'm As Vice later discovered, this confrontation stemmed from another drill artist insulting Sheikh's father in a diss track aimed at him, KTS Dre. Landra Sylvester, who is popularly also known as KTS Dre or Cutthroat Dreco, was born in Chicago, Illinois back in 1990. Gang life was all around him from day one, as he grew up in a family deeply involved in that lifestyle. His dad, Vincent Davis, who went by KTS Vinny, was said to be part of the Gang Disciples Gang. Sadly, in 2016, he lost his life due to gang violence. It didn't end there. KTS Dre also had a brother named Devin Davis, known as KTS Vaughn, who was fatally shot in 2015. To give you some background, the KTS, which means kill to survive tag used by Dre and his crew, represented a bond between the Pocket Town GD, Lakeside GD, and 075 Vice Lords. So it's no wonder that Sylvester got caught up in street life. It was the world he knew. Before his tragic end, KTS Dre had some heated encounters with some ops, and those moments were broadcast live for all to see. One major beef was with the NLMB gang. This feud stemmed from the KTS's anger over the alleged killing of someone named Bassett back in 2008. They had some tense confrontations, like the one where they tried to force NLMB Cairo to say some disrespectful words about their crew. Cairo, however, didn't back down, and that got KTS Dre pretty mad. He even threw a punch in the heat of the moment. Later on, there was an incident involving gunshots, but it's unclear who was firing and who got hit. After that, KTS Dre and NLMB Cairo got into a live argument on Instagram about who ran away during their first face-off. When y'all ever chase me? Whoever chased me? Whoever chased me, bro? You from you from over east, internet, and whole east side gonna hit me. Whoever chased me on 79. You or did niggas run for me? Or did niggas run for me? You did get changed. KTS Dre's life wasn't all about beef and battles, though. He had a run-in with the law, serving a three-year sentence for a gun charge at one point. He had a habit of landing in jail over the years. In 2021, he got arrested for breaking the conditions of his bail from a case the previous year, but he managed to get bonded out from Cook County Jail thanks to his fiance. Tragically, as he was leaving the jail with his girl and grandmother, a terrible incident unfolded. A man is dead after a shooting right in front of the Cook County Jail. A man named Lundry Sylvester was leaving the jail. Uh, he went by the rap name KTS Dre. Two people got out of a car and fired shots, striking them both. The man suffered gunshot wounds to the face and chest and was pronounced dead at Mount Sinai. While walking towards a car, two people from two different cars started shooting at him multiple times. KTS Dre took 64 bullets in various parts of his body and sadly didn't make it. His 60-year-old grandmother got hit in the knee and an innocent woman nearby suffered a graze wound to her mouth. Luckily, both of them survived and were in stable condition after getting medical attention. It was confirmed that KTS Dre was the target of the attack, but it's still not clear if NLMB was behind it. Regardless, it's a heartbreaking loss for a family that had already endured the deaths of their father and two sons in just five years. Tragic indeed. Lil Tim, Timothy Leakes, a 22-year-old rapper from Savannah, Georgia, faced charges in connection with the shooting that took the life of rapper King Von. This tragic incident happened outside a nightclub in Atlanta on November 6th, as per the police. Interestingly, Leakes is known to have ties with rapper Quando Rondo, according to a close friend of King Von. Like I said earlier, King Von was shot and killed right in front of a hookah bar. It all began with a simple scuffle that eventually escalated into a violent confrontation in the parking lot of the Monaco Hookah Lounge. When everything settled down, King Von was severely 
severely injured and dead, and another man named Mark Blakely, age 34, had also lost his life during the altercation. Sources close to Quando Rondo have a different side to the story. They claim that Quando Rondo wasn't looking for trouble that night. In fact, he was taking a nap in his car outside the club. When he woke up, he found King Von's crew on the scene, and things quickly got tense. Von approached Quando and his crew with anger, sparking the brawl that unfolded. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution reported that on November 7th, Leaks was charged with murdering King Von. This tragic shooting occurred during an argument between two groups of people, leading to the loss of two lives. Interestingly, internet detectives used surveillance footage to identify Leaks as the suspected shooter even before the police officially released his name. Shortly after the incident, Lul Tim was arrested and charged with felony murder, believed to be the one who pulled the trigger and took King Von's life. Lul Tim spent some time in an Atlanta jail, but was released in March 2021 after posting $100,000 bail. Quando Rondo and his fellow Crip gang members celebrated Lul Tim's release on social media, with Quando Rondo even referring to him as his god, Blueface. Blueface is famous for his speedy and chatty style of rapping. He really caught everyone's attention with his hit song, Thotiana, which made it into the top 10 chart. He's not shy at all about showing his affiliation with gang life, often sporting the color blue, which is linked to the Crips. He even recorded a track called Respect My Crippin' with Snoop Dogg, and it dropped in 2020. Originally from Los Angeles, Blueface moved around California as he grew up. He even played football for Fayetteville State University in North Carolina before he decided to focus on his music career. But things took a wild turn in his life when he got arrested on attempted murder charges. The whole incident went down in a Las Vegas club, where a disagreement between Blueface's crew and another group turned violent. Unfortunately, Blueface found himself caught in the middle, leading to a moment of truth that revealed the dark side of his fame. Blueface was taken into custody by the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police outside of Lolo's Chicken and Waffles joint. There's even a video from TMZ showing the moment undercover police officers arrested Blueface while he was just sitting on a bench outside the restaurant. Fast forward. To June 26, 2023, Blueface shocked everyone in the Las Vegas courtroom by pleading guilty to two charges instead of going through a preliminary hearing. Rapper Blueface pleading guilty in court today to two charges stemming from a shooting outside a Las Vegas strip club happened last year. Sentencing set for October 2nd. The ages now investigators telling us Blueface will only face probation. He admitted his wrongdoing in one felony count of firing a gun into an occupied vehicle and one misdemeanor battery charge. The rapper's formal plea hearing is set for July 3rd, and the state of Nevada doesn't seem to be against giving him probation. This means all the other charges against Blueface will be dropped. Before this incident, he had been arrested in 2022 for having a loaded gun during a traffic stop in Hollywood. And back in 2019, he got arrested for having another loaded and unregistered gun. And as if that wasn't enough, very recently, while he was working out in his boxing gym, he got into a scuffle and ended up getting stabbed. He was at the Kaminsky Boxing Gym in LA San Fernando Valley when this happened. Blueface described it as feeling like he was attacked by a boogeyman. There's even a video showing a man walking up to him with a dog by his side and a boxing trainer trying to keep them apart. They exchanged words and then Blueface, wearing boxing gloves, took a swing at the man several times in the face. Hip-hop artist Brandon Henry Snell was later arrested and booked for felony assault with a deadly weapon in connection to the incident. And that's it for this video. If you want to see more videos like this, click on the cards on the screen.